All right, what's up? Unfortunately, we're back here again to do camera backpack review part two. Last year, we reviewed five or six camera bags to replace my low pro uh, pro trucker 350 or 450 or whatever it was and that had lasted me at least six or seven years of hardcore travel when it finally wore out and the bag was discontinued we replaced it with the whistler 450 aw after testing a number of bags unfortunately after only eight months of travel and less than 150,000 airline miles the shoulder strap stitching has failed and it is only being held on by one or two stitches. You can start to see on the other shoulder harness that it's it's starting to do the same thing there. My buddy Alex Tabagska, <laughs> my buddy Alex to, for Alex Tabagska, who's really big into stitching and making bags, advised me that this stitching is of poor quality. So this bag, unfortunately, has to be retired at this point. Now, to make matters worse, we sent a photo in along with our receipt to Lowepro to ask if they were, would warranty the bag, either replacement or repair uh, for this bag. Low Pro uh, unfortunately declined us because we had purchased the bag from Amazon. First of all, I wanna point out that it took us at least three to four tries to even get them to respond, which has not been my experience in the past. Um, and when they finally did, we had the following reply. Hello, Matt. Uh, Calumet on Amazon, AKA CNA Marketing, AKA CNA Global is not an authorized dealer and does not get product from us. They deal in gray market and possibly counterfeit goods. We have no way of knowing where these goods came from or what condition they are sold in. If the bag is a counterfeit bag, uh, I certainly feel bad for Low Pro because nobody should be violating trademark and making counterfeit bags of lower quality. I don't believe it's a counterfeit bag. It may be a gray market bag. Uh, I certainly sympathize with Low Pro if that's the case. Uh, but I do believe it was a bag made by Low Pro and it is of inferior quality or at least had some manufacturing defect or at the very least wasn't designed to carry 50 to 60 pounds for eight months. So we've got a number of other bags to try. First up, we have the F-Stop Ajna, which I tried to get last year, if you remember, and said we went with the Lotus because the Ajna was out of stock. At the time I made a commentary on F-Stop being a horrible company and doing a really poor job of delivering products on time. Unfortunately, ordering from F-Stop's a f***ing nightmare. I will say, as of February 2018, ordering this was a superb process. I ordered it, they shipped it, and it was delivered in three to five days, like any reputable, regular company would do. So we have an F-Stop Ajna. We have a Mind Shift First Light 30 liter. We also have the, the First Light 40 liter and the Mindshift Backlight 36 liter, which sizing wise is right in between those two. And these are the ones I'm most excited about. My buddy Will Rogi has an Ajna that he's really happy with, and he's always out there keeping drifting fun and having a great time, so I really wanted to try this bag out. The size I really like. It's like just, just barely big enough, which is what I want. I don't want a bag that's too big that has more bulk than I need. I have a Pro insert in right now, I believe. I've got the lid folded back, it's tethered in here. But when you fold the backpack lid, it catches the lid of the insert, makes it somewhat hard to zip. You have this dead space that's on top of the insert and on the sides of the insert. And you're basically just adding weight by having a double fabric system. I know some people would completely disagree with me, and I understand where they're coming from, but for my specific usage, I would prefer to not have the insert system and do away with a couple ounces. Everything is well constructed, like it feels like a really nice bag up here, at least not in the strapping and the harness system, but up here, it feels like a good bag. You've got nice chunky zippers that feel like they're gonna last. There's good zippers inside, good netting. Everything feels really well stitched. You can see the top of the insert there, which is one of the features I don't like. It is nice to put a rain shell or you know some of your personal gear up top, things that aren't gonna necessarily fall down in there, so that's a, that's a nice area for that type of stuff, but not for your headlamp and your gaff tape, things like that. The actual top pouch has some cool webbing, it's got a key hook, you know, things that you would expect. The fabric feels fine, not above and beyond, but fine. 
And then you've got organization here. Um, that's pretty standard. Don't want to spill my LaCroix. So this is the Backlight 36L. And what I really like about the Backlight 36L and the other Mindshift bags is right out of the bag, you can tell that they're really kind of beefy bags. They're really thoughtfully put together. Like this rear panel is almost too much for me. Whether that's chunkier and just adds weight for no reason or not, um, we'll have to see. I like the inside. I like the back panel. I like when it has this mesh netting because you can see through it. You can see SD cards, or for me, I use uh, I put some nine volt batteries in there and lens adapters and things like that. The inner liner in these, the actual dividers are way thinner than some of the other bags. Um, I don't think that that means that they're lower quality, but there is definitely less padding on some of these between the actual uh, dividing areas. The inside here has really good space. It comes with a cool little rain cover. Um, I prefer when these are attached to the bag or at least have a permanent home for them because if it's in this pouch, it's gonna leave there immediately because I need to put actual camera gear there. Oh, I should have mentioned, this has this strap here that is so that you can spin the bag around on your body and hold it open like this, which they demonstrate in their product video. Can you see that? Which is kind of rad, but if you have 65 pounds of cinema camera in there, it's kind of a moot point for me, so we would end up removing that if uh, I decided to use this bag. The front panel, really nice. You've got good room for personal gear here in the front, so you can put like a rain shell, snacks right there in the front, or uh, whatever else you want. It's got a top section that's really narrow, which is kind of a bummer. Then it's got a tripod strap up top as well. Also in the front, you've got your laptop compartment. It's got like little pen holders and stuff, which is rad because you don't wanna be the guy that's on the plane asking for the pen for the customs form to fill out for the Brits. Um, so you can keep those things organized. You can get your personal stuff in here. <clears throat> There's nice room in there, but it's pretty well laid out. I miss having a nice top pouch up here. Not having that is kind of a bummer, because this space, when it's an over, overhead bin, is your bonus space. You can always collapse or expand this and it'll still fit in the bin. So I like having that area to store a bunch of stuff. So let me get to the First Light bags. This is the First Light 40L, 40 liter. And again, just like the uh, Backlight, bag's really well constructed. It's got a pretty intense harness system here. It's got like a, a height adjustment for your harness system, so you de-velcro it, you can raise or lower it, which is nice so it fits your back better. It's also got front pouch, personal gear, bigger front pouch, more personal gear, and the big main pouch. So this is a big, big bag. You can see it there. Huge main pouch, lots of nice zipper pouches on the inside flap, which I really like. The same sort of liner uh, divider system, which is thinner like these nice laminated panels that are, are thin. That sounds dumb. These two are front opening bags. So you access your camera equipment through the front. The thing I don't like about that, obviously, the first thing, is in order to get to your equipment, you have to put your shoulder straps in the mud or the cow patties of France or wherever it is you are. If you do have a zipper that fails, which happens, you could potentially yard sale all of your gear across the airport or if somebody doesn't zip your bag up, you grab it and swing it up into a van. You just yard sale all your gear. Or you're on the Vaporetto floating boat taxi thing in Venice. Some dude can sneak up behind you and peel your bag open when you're not looking and steal your Epic W Helium body. Then you're out 30 grand and you're super bummed out. Other than that, you know, that's kind of a design choice. It's kind of a personal thing. The bag is really well put together. You have side pouches, expansion, panels built into them so you could really pump these out with like a, a mid layer or a nice shell or something and it's got rad handles both on the top and the side like really beefy handles so if you're hoisting this up into an overhead bin or into the back of a van or some pickup truck and the 36L is basically the exact same bag just smaller but they're really well put together bags I really like them I just don't know if I want a front opening bag. Let's just double check the weight of all these guys. We have our scale here and onto the scale. Seven pounds, 10 ounces. So let's check 
the 40, which is a bigger bag. Six pounds, 4.2 ounces. So over a pound less than the Whistler 450, and it's definitely a larger bag. Probably close to an inch wider. F-Stop Ajna with the Pro ICU inside. Five pounds, six ounces. And last, the Backlight 36L. Really like this bag, feels lighter. Five pounds, 0.2 ounces. And from a physical size standpoint, the Backlight is really close to the Whistler 450. It doesn't have this top pouch. All the volume is on the inside. But looking at the two, they're relatively close in size. I believe the backlight has a little bit more internal volume, but it's almost two pounds less, which is really nice. I would like to have two pounds less on my back. So now the biggest question with all these bags is whether or not they fit in the overhead bin. The reason you have a carry-on bag is so that you can keep your important expensive equipment with you on your person or your batteries with you because you can't check them. It needs to fit in the overhead bin. It's the absolute most important thing of any backpack. I've been removed from flights for refusing to gate check my bag, even though I know it fits. But how do we double check that? Let me introduce you to the specialty field production the EMB 145 bag sizer bin. We built this out of 8020 and cardboard, and it mimics an EMB 145 overhead bin almost exactly. We've got a flip up panel specifically for camera. But this allows us to double check all of our bin sizing and make sure that whatever we're carrying on does in fact fit in the bin. This way, when the gate agent tells you it doesn't fit, you can tell her, guess what chick, you're wrong. Go back to high school, try again. First up, the F-Stop Ashna into the bin. And with a little finesse, I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna fit no problem. You'd have to double back the harness underneath there, which gives up a half inch, but that's usually how it goes and ah, stuff that guy in there with the taper of the bin you'll be no problem you might have to remove some stuff from the front panel if you have it really poofed out but the f-stop ashna most certainly fits in the emb145 overhead bin and also would fit in the cog 700 which is a little bit bigger backlight 36 l one thing that's nice about this is the way their harness is hinged it doesn't have a ton of memory here and it actually came out of the box rolled up like this on the front. So you can actually get that harness out of the way, which gives you an extra half inch, maybe even an inch of depth. So let's take a look. It's going to be close. Keep in mind, the guy next to you is waiting for you to sit down. Grandma's back there too, holding everyone up because you're the first person on the plane. If you're not the first person on the plane, you're doing it wrong. Get that in there. And there we go. Door comes up like this. This is green tape is the front of our door. It does have a taper on the EMB 145. The backlight 36L does in fact fit on an EMB 145 bin, which is exciting because I knew it was gonna be close. All right, and we'll go with the biggest first light. First light 40L. Here we go. It's gonna be close. We're getting yelled at. Let's bring in the Stroop waffles. And that's close. So when you bring that door up and it slides up, depending on how you have this harness, if you have it underneath the bag, we're probably gonna be out of vertical room. If you have it in front of the bag, you're probably gonna be squeezing the door on that. It's gonna be tight, but I think overall, as long as you don't have too much stuff pooped out, it's gonna fit. All four of these bags certainly fit in the 145 bin. So then it comes down to a matter of does it fit the equipment and does it have the features that you want, more of the personal preference stuff. Of all these bags, I don't know which one I'm gonna keep. The Low Pro, I was really happy with, but it failed on me, and I feel like Low Pro left us hanging. The F-Stop, I feel like is really well put together, except the back panel and the harness, I think kind of sucks, and I hate the insert system because you're losing volume. The Mind Shift, really nice bag. I feel like it's really well constructed, has a ton of volume for the weight, it's lighter than the Low Pro, but I hate that it doesn't have a top uh, pouch on it, a big top pouch. And the first lights, again, really well constructed. I hate the missing top pouch. And I'm not sure I want a front opening bag. Update. Low Pro just replied to my Instagram post. 
and said, if you purchased from Amazon, customer service should have referred you back to Amazon for the warranty. I checked the location of the fail with a bag here in the office and spoke with our design team. That should not have failed in you. Have you contacted Amazon? I have contacted Amazon. Uh, they say it's Low Pro's problem. Low Pro says it's Amazon's problem. Um, they have a lifetime warranty on the bag, so I would consider it to be Low Pro's problem. So I'm going to send it back to Amazon and I don't know. I'll have to find out. Thank <laughs> you.